But obviously, the federal government has an ability to teach a lot of folks because they've got funding. Uh, there are a hundred times that many people that need to be trained at the state and local level. So often, uh, those are the first people that uh, touch the evidence, see the evidence, uh, react to the evidence. Uh, on any kind of incident response, uh, state and local law enforcement, usually the guys that are there first, might get handed off, but if it isn't treated correctly and reacted to correctly uh, on that initial touch, uh, then shame on us. Uh, we are challenged, like everybody else, with, with uh, changing technology, but uh, thankfully we've got a group of uh, pretty smart guys that uh, are on staff, and we have a, have a habit of partnering with some pretty smart folks. Uh, for instance, at Purdue University, I've got one of my folks that uh, is actually housed at Purdue and works there day to day, teaches a class uh, during the school year at Purdue and does work for us when he's not teaching. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, projects we're working with uh, Florida State University that it's going to result in a tool that state and local law enforcement has been screaming for in the forensic community. So we try to get as much bang for the buck as we can and pinch that penny and get a mile of copper wire out of it uh, because we are a small agency. Uh, and I would echo, I don't know who said it, it may have been you, uh, come help us. Uh, state and local law enforcement. Uh, Sometimes is a is kind of a tough fraternity to, to get into. Uh, you may have to uh, knock on their door more than once, uh, but the effort would be worth it. Uh, sitting in this room and the people at this conference today are some of the smartest people in the United States, uh, and uh, we can use that kind of help at the state and local level. Uh, there is somebody in every state in the United States doing computer forensics. And it may be an RCFL, a, a FBI-sponsored lab, but more likely it's probably a state or a small, medium-sized police department that's got a computer forensic unit. Uh, you can help those folks. Uh, it's a matter of you choosing to. Uh, and trust me, they can use the expertise. Uh, that's who we are. And, and what's your background? I'm an old cop. I've been a cop for Got 37 years. I, I really am as old as I look. <laughs> Dr. Wells. My name is Lynn Wells. Uh, I'm uh, now with the National Defense University, uh, working on force transformation, which is nice because it gives me a chance to plan any sandbox I want to plan. Before that, I was the principal deputy in networks and information integration in the Pentagon for uh, several years, and I was career Navy before that. A uh, couple points to make is the DOD is really continuing to increase the emphasis on cybersecurity that's been uh, going on for several years. Uh, in the past few months, uh, they've announced a new Deputy Assistant Secretary for uh, essentially uh, network assurance and identity management. And the identity management is a very important part of uh, this. We're also trying to shift the focus from just information assurance to mission assurance to make sure that the job can be accomplished whatever level of attack we're <coughs> under. And then many of you may have seen the Air Force has actually stood up a new cyber command, uh, which is, uh, you know, promises to have some significant uh, improvements as it gets going. The focus we're working on is moving from defense in depth to defense in breadth, particularly on uh, cleared insider problems and anomalous behavior inside the network. The other piece that's a major focus right now is on globalization and how you can uh, understand the threats at all levels of the supply chain, each stage of the supply chain, not just looking at current operations. And that's actually becoming a major focus for the U.S. interagency across the government. But one of the things I really need your help on is it's proved to be extraordinarily difficult to make the case in the budget environment for significantly increased funding for information assurance. Those of us who live in this field understand the importance of it, certainly you all do, but the folks who dole out the money actually want to see returns on investment, want to be able to uh, have us come back and uh, show how the money spent this year is going to produce you know, the following results three or four years down the pike. 
And candidly, our community has not done a very good job in uh, teeing up those sorts of metrics, making those kind of cases. So we welcome any sort of efforts from your perspective. Uh, also, uh, we're making concerted efforts in DOD to engage better outside the boundaries of the defense enterprise with our civil military partners, not just uh, state and local responders, but also non-governmental organizations, private sector, and this is a good time to uh, engage. The final thing I'd like to say is about career and public service. For those of you who are thinking about maybe changing jobs, something like 40 percent of the DOD acquisition workforce is going to be eligible for retirement in the next five to ten years. There's going to be enormous turnover at the senior levels of DOD, and that should provide some real opportunities for those of you who want to take a look at doing something uh, really important that's part of history and something more than just yourself. So thank you very much for being here. Really appreciate what you do. Look forward to your questions. Um, I guess I'll tell you who I am. I'm Jim Christie. I'm the uh, Director of uh, Futures Exploration for the Defense Cyber Crime Center. The uh, Defense Cyber Crime Center uh, is a center of excellence for the Department of Defense, has three major components. Uh, we have the world's largest accredited digital forensics lab, have a, has about 90 examiners. Uh, we have a uh, defense uh, computer investigative training academy where we train the, uh, uh, both the criminal and the counterintelligence investigators in the Department of Defense on how to do digital forensics as well as uh, cybercrime investigations. Uh, we have a uh, Defense Cybercrime Institute, which does the research and development of tools, as well as, just as important, uh, the testing and the validation of those tools so they can be used in a, an accredited uh, forensics uh, environment. Uh, my background, I was a special agent for 21 years doing cybercrime, 35 years with the, with the government, retired, and so I'm looking for other opportunities. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a free agent now. So, uh, anyway, uh, at this point, what I'd like to do is if we have microphones, I'd like to turn it over to you guys to ask uh, this uh, uh, panel of questions. Uh, remember that we have about 10 minutes, and then we're going to switch panels, and then we're going to bring up the law enforcement. Uh, counterintelligence panel. So I think we have a question over here. If you wait for the uh, microphone so everybody can hear, that would be great. Yeah, I was just curious. Whoa. <laughs> I was just curious if, from a information assurance perspective, from inside the Fed, you guys would support net neutrality. Okay, we'll start with you, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyers have an answer and an opinion on everything. So. You know, I, I said earlier that Jim and I were friends, and you notice that it's moved to past tense. <laughs> no, he's, he's still my good friend. Uh, I think it really depends on how you define net neutrality. I've listened very closely to the well-argued presentations on both sides, and I'm always convinced by the last one that I've heard so the lobbyists are doing an extremely good job. <laughs> was that a lawyer answer or what? <laughs> that, that was a thing of beauty, Rich. <laughs> Anybody else want to take a stab at that? Obviously not. Next question. Is that you? Uh, to the gentleman from the GAO, you say you test the uh, uh, administration's uh, systems um, and yep. their security posture. Yep. Is your mandate extended to the Republican National Committee uh, Committee's email systems as well? <laughs> <laughs> Rich, you're going to be a busy guy. All right, who painted me the designated pinata? <laughs> Not so far. That's uh, privately held and is not, uh, is not a government system. So uh, when I didn't say the administrations, I said the executive branch. So that's the distinction. I'm, I'm sure if something got through the Supreme Court, if they wanted somebody to test it, um, they'd have to test executive privilege first, wouldn't they? A I don't, I don't anybody believe from a corporation that did that? Anybody from a corporation? <laughs> uh, I'm a member of the Electronic Crime Task Force in New York. Um, and the one thing that we really Could you need. Identify yourself? Oh, sorry. Eric Walburn, uh, Information Survival. 
Okay. Um, the, one of the things that I think we need is a better way uh, or some sort of training course that teaches us how to handle, um, you know, cybercrime and, and evidence gathering because those of us that are not forensic specialists need to know that information too because we're often the first, on, first ones to come across this stuff. I'll take that. We provide uh, a course on just exactly that, not only a course that you can come and take, but we do a train the trainer course. Um, where are you out at? New York? Matter of fact, I think we've done one there, but if you'll get with me afterward, uh, we can certainly make that train the trainer course available to your task force or whoever in that area. Well, if you're with the Electronic Crimes ca Task Force, we can make it available to you. But it's, it's exactly what you're asking for. It's a, it's a course on how to identify electronic evidence, how to handle it. Yeah, can you give him a microphone? All, all we ever got, um, this was actually back when um, Bob Weaver ran, ran the task force. Um, great guy. Uh, He's my hero. One of mine too. Yeah. Um, and we got this this pamphlet that would tell us how to handle it, but it, it, it really is kind of lacking in that we really don't know exactly how to you know unplug the computer and say okay now give this to sure. forensics um, sure. without damaging any evidence gathering. Yeah, our course is is exactly what you you need. It's that first responder. I'm not a geek. You know I don't know what a mouse is, um, but here's a, a step by step process for seizure. Here's how to identify it. You know, what's media? If you've never seen a thumb drive, we'll show you what a thumb drive looks like. That kind of really, really basic stuff that that uh, it's probably a one-day course. I think it's actually a six-hour course. It's, but get with me afterwards. That's exactly, that's right down our alley. I, I think there are over 18,000 law enforcement agencies in the United <laughs> States and, and over 50 percent have 25 officers or less. And uh, at the state and local level, I think their, uh, their primary focus is putting fuel in, in patrol cars. And um, um, cybercrime and cybercrime investigations really hasn't moved to the top of their list. So as uh, citizens of your uh, counties and states, you, know, you should uh, uh, make your state representatives uh, uh, understand that. Uh, the need for this kind of capability and the training that the National White Collar Crime uh, Center provides, uh, you guys have to tell these folks. You know, most most lawyers that are state representatives not uh, are unlike Rich. They they spell computer with a K. They have no idea, <laughs> uh, and so do most police chiefs. So I, I just pissed a bunch of them off, didn't I? Let me, let me quickly well, that add to that. that. Our our training is free to state and local law enforcement. So it doesn't cost them anything. The challenge for state and local law enforcement is to find the funding to get the equipment to do the work and, and uh, the funding to, to travel to wherever we or anybody else is doing training. Uh, and some states get it and some states really don't. And those that don't can be prodded along the way uh, by their constituents, that's for sure. We've seen that happen time after time. But uh, Jim makes a good point. Kevin, did you have? Well, I just mentioned if you're looking for resources. Microphone. Sorry. If you're looking for resources for training, Jim's right. I mean, there, we, we barely have enough to train the individuals we refer to as cyber cops. But for those of you in industry, the way I've been able to reach out in some cases, and this is a limited number of individuals, albeit I bring people from industry in to teach some of my courses, uh, intrusion, uh, internet.